All right, so now we're gonna look at doing uh, tessellations using triangles. Now it should work for any triangle that you have. An equilateral triangle is going to be the easiest, of course, because we know that that one tessellates. But what if we had a triangle that doesn't have three equal sides and three equal angles? So I've cut one out here. Again, I've labeled uh, my corners, my vertices as one, two, three. And there's two different ways that I can tessellate this. So I'm gonna show you how to do both methods. Obviously first we have to start by at least tracing one of the triangles. So I'm gonna trace it on here, okay? And again, on my drawing, I'll try and label it uh, one, two, and three. So I got one, two, three. And I'm gonna label my triangle on here as well using those same things. You might wanna draw it a little bit lighter on yours so that it's easier to erase afterwards. So what I'm gonna do is just like with quadrilaterals, I'm going to rotate this triangle. Now it doesn't matter which side I pick, how about I pick this two, three side. So I'm gonna kind of go right in the middle and I'm gonna spin it 180 degrees, perform that rotation so that now two and three are next to each other and the th two and three here are next to each other. Okay, so those two shapes are still congruent. They have the same shape and size, but one is just a rotated version of the other. So I would just fill in, or sorry, not fill in, but trace around the outside. Okay. And I would write in now, so I had my two was down at the bottom, my one is in the top corner here, and my three has moved up top. Okay. And now if I was to take that triangle again, and let's say I rotate it on this one, two side. Okay. So again, I kind of put my finger in the middle, and I rotate 180 degrees, which means I spin it all the way around. And then here along the bottom, my one goes in the bottom part here, three in my other bottom corner and two is now up top. So I've got one, two, and three. And so we see that I've really just slid this shape across. Okay, it's in exactly the same spot. So I can do that translation to slide it from one space to the next. Okay, now the other thing you might wanna note is down here in the bottom corner, I've got angle three and angle two and angle one are all joined together. That's important because in a triangle, the total angles is 180 degrees, okay? Well, yes, one, two, three, my total triangle angles here is going to be 180 degrees, but when they all match up here, I really just have a straight line going across and it's still 180 degrees. Now, if I was to keep rotating this shape Let's, let's say I spin it on my one three side and I spin it down here like this. I'm just gonna end up repeating the same thing that I had already up top, okay? And then I'm gonna spin again on this side here. And so I'll draw this here, going like that. And then I'll spin it one last time on my two one side. So it flips around this way. And I'm just really gonna keep flipping, sorry, not flipping, but rotating that triangle across my whole page to fill everything in. Now, when I did those, um, I didn't write down my angles. So sorry, that was bad. Should have filled in my angles for demonstration purposes here. <clears throat> and then we had the one and the two and the three. Now notice, I got three, two, one, and then three, two, one. So my angles, my corners are kind of looping around in a circle. And since the top added up to 180, the bottom adds up to 180, and that gives me my 360 degrees. Now I need 360 degrees in order to have a tessellation, right? We said our vertices have to add up to 360. So we do get it there. The other thing you might notice is there's some stuff way back in grade six, you would have learned about like intersecting lines. So if I was to just take this here and I was to say this blue line is intersecting with this red line, you might have learned back in grade six that these two opposite angles here should be the same. And if you look in our tessellation, they are because all we've done is rotating. So we actually get lots of cool geometry that you've been doing for a while. Um, in this one here. So here's what it would look like if I colored it all in. Okay, so I did one earlier. I colored it all in. So here we go. I had my triangle starts off there and all the red ones can slide and translate into all of the other red ones. 
okay? So it's a translation to go from any red triangle to any other red triangle, nothing changes, okay? The blue triangle is the same as the red triangle, but just rotated 180 degrees, and I can translate any blue rectangle onto itself, okay? So that is one of the methods for tessellating using triangles, okay? Now the other one, the other way I can do it, again, I'm gonna start off the same, trace around my triangle. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is a little bit different. So all I've been doing so far is I've just been spinning my triangle and rotating it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a reflection of my triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a reflection in this line right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip my triangle over so that it's the same on the other side. And if this is kind of my line, it should look exactly the same on both sides. So that's just a reflection. So now I'm flipping it over. Now notice when I flip over my triangle, I don't have anything written down. I don't have any numbers written down. So I wanna think about what those numbers are. So when I flip it, here's angle number one. When I flip it over, okay, when I flip it over, this here is still angle number one but now it's my flipped upside down angle. So I'm just gonna write it as a one F. That way I know that I've flipped it, okay? And then up top, this corner was a two. When I flip it like this, this now becomes my two F and three F. And I'm just gonna label it differently so I can tell whether I've, I'm on my flipped triangle or whether I'm on my regular triangle. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this triangle. I've got one, two, and three. I'm gonna take that triangle and I'm gonna flip it like this along the one side. Now it doesn't matter which side you flip it along as long as you're consistent in how you flip it. And I'm gonna trace around the outside. Okay, and now I'll fill in this one here is one flip, three flip, and two flip, okay? So you can see I've got one, two, three, and then I've got one flip, two flip, three flip. Now I'm gonna go back to my original blue one, okay? And like before, I'm gonna rotate it, similar to how I did in the last one, so that along this two, three side, I'm just gonna switch it so that my two and three meet up together. I'll trace along the outside, okay? And this gives me now my two moves down here, my three moves up there, my one moves there. And I'm gonna take that triangle and I'm gonna flip it along this same line that I flipped before. I'm gonna flip this one too. So I'm gonna flip this blue one down like this, okay? I flip it just like I did with the other one. And now I'm gonna trace around the outside and here we go. And my corners, I've got two flip was up here, one flip was down in that corner, and three flip was down here. And so if you look, it's also like I took my flipped triangle that was here, and I spun it 180 degrees to there. So I could really spin again, and I could put it here, okay? So we'll move it across like this, and then like that. And then I can flip it from this section back up into the top, okay? And so I kind of have a flip row and a regular row, okay? I have a flip row and a regular row, okay? And as I have this one, if I wanted to continue my pattern up, since this is just my regular row going across, when I move up into the next section, my next row up top now needs to be a flipped row. And so I'm gonna have a flip row going across the top here. And so really I'm rotating and flipping and rotating and flipping and rotating and flipping, okay? And that's all I'm doing to create my tessellation. 
Now, I don't want to draw all of this out for you, okay? But again, you might notice going across here, I've got angle three, angle two, angle one. Adding all those together is going to give me 180 degrees. I have angle one flip, which is the same as angle one. I have angle two flip, which is the same as angle two, and three flip, which is the same as angle three. That's also 180 degrees, so I'm still getting the 360 degrees at any vertex, okay? So that's why this one still works. Now, I did draw this one out, and I colored it a little bit differently than I have in the other ones, okay? I colored this one differently to show Here's my original one. These red rectangles are the original orientation where I've got one, two, three. And I can slide to any other red triangle. Okay, I can do a translation onto any other red triangle. Okay, but to get it to turn into an orange one, if I try to slide onto the orange triangle, it doesn't work. See, I can see a little bit of the orange. I can tell that my red one doesn't slide perfectly into the orange one, okay? The red one only translates to red ones, all right? The green is the red ones flipped over, okay? So greens are my red ones flipped over. And I chose red and green on purpose. Red is a primary color, green's a secondary color, and green is the complementary color of red. So if I take my red one and I flip it onto the green one, all my greens can translate to any other greens, okay? The green ones do not translate onto the blue ones. Look, if I try to match up my corners, look, you can still see some blue here. The green ones do not translate onto the blue ones. That's because my blue ones are in my regular row. So if I rotated my triangle. There we go. I've now put it onto the blue ones. The blue ones translate to any of the blue ones. The blue ones do not translate to the green ones. Okay. Now the blue one, primary color, right? In my regular row, red and blue were my primaries in my regular row. The opposite of blue, the complementary color is orange. So blue flips onto the orange one and then the oranges translate onto one another. So I just did different colors here to kind of show what was going on. So I used my primary colors of um, blue and red going across, and I can see that I screwed this one up. It should be red, so just pretend that one's red. I'm not refilming the whole video, not worth it, okay? But blue and red, okay, are my primaries. That was when my triangle was in its original orientation. When I flipped it over and I was on my flip angles, that's my secondary colors of green and orange. Now, red and green are complementary colors, so that's why they are the reverse of one another, and that's why I colored them like that. And then blue and orange are complementary colors, and they are the flip of one another, okay? So there's two different ways for doing tessellations using triangles, where either you're just rotating every single time to go from one to the other. Everything's just a rotation. You can spin your triangle as many times as you like. Just match up equal sides, okay? If you are going to flip your triangle over, okay, make sure that you are recording it as a flip in your corners. So make sure you maybe write something down like one flip, two flip, three flip, so it makes it easier for you to keep, keep track of, okay? And that's tessellations using triangles.